Hey everyone, welcome to the Mojo GPU Puzzle Tutorial Series. The Mojo GPU Puzzle Book takes you on a journey from first principles to advanced GPU programming techniques. This tutorial is a supplemental resource to help provide more context and guidance to users new to GPU programming. This series is all about learning by doing. We're going to solve progressively more challenging puzzles together, and by the end, you'll have hands-on experience writing real GPU code in Mojo. So what will you learn in this series? Here are our key objectives. First, you'll understand the fundamental shift from sequential CPU thinking to massively parallel GPU programming. We're talking about mapping thousands of individual threads of data for concurrent processing. Second, you'll learn to write real GPU kernels that run on diverse hardware. Everything from simple element-wise operations to sophisticated algorithms like parallel reductions, convolutions, and matrix multiplication. These kernels will be compatible with the most powerful data center GPUs and the Apple Silicon GPU right on my laptop. And finally, you'll learn the fundamentals of Mojo. Mojo is a systems programming language specifically designed for high performance AI infrastructure. Its Pythonic syntax makes it easy to read and learn while delivering state of the art performance. Before we dive in, let's define some essential terms you'll be hearing throughout the series. The first is a kernel function. A GPU kernel is simply a function that runs on a GPU, executing a specific computation on a large dataset in parallel across thousands or millions of threads. A thread is the basic unit of parallel execution on a GPU. Each thread runs the same kernel code, but processes different data elements. Modern GPUs can run tens of thousands of threads simultaneously. A thread block is a coordinated group of threads that can share memory and synchronize with each other. Threads within a block can communicate very efficiently. A grid is the top level organizational structure for the threads executing a kernel function. A grid consists of multiple thread blocks, which are further divided into individual threads that execute the kernel function concurrently. The next concept is the distinction between host and device memory. This is an important one. Host memory is dynamic random access memory, DRAM, accessible by the CPU, whereas device memory is DRAM accessible by the GPU. If you have data in host memory, you have to explicitly copy it to device memory before you can use it in a kernel function. Similarly, if your kernel function produces data that you want to move to the CPU to use later, you must explicitly copy it back to host memory. Another memory distinction is that between global memory and shared memory. Global memory is the GPU's main memory space accessible by all threads. It's large, but it's relatively slow. Shared memory is the fast on-chip memory that threads within a block use to communicate. It's orders of magnitude faster than global memory, which makes it critical for performance. Now let's talk about the fundamental mindset shift required for GPU programming. In traditional CPU programming, we process data sequentially through loops. Imagine processing an array of a million elements. We go one by one, element by element. But with GPU programming, we completely flip this model. Instead of moving through the data sequentially, we map thousands of parallel threads directly onto all the data at once. Each thread becomes responsible for computing a single element. We eliminate the loop entirely by having massive parallelism. Here's how a typical GPU program works. First, we initialize data in CPU memory, that's our host memory. Second, we allocate GPU memory and transfer our data from host to device. Third, we launch a kernel function that runs on the GPU, processing all that data in parallel. Finally, we copy the results back from the device to host memory so our CPU can use them. And here's the beautiful part. This typically runs asynchronously. The GPU can churn through computations while your CPU is doing other work. But when you need the results, you must explicitly synchronize to ensure the GPU is finished. In GPU programming, we need to rethink what's expensive. Moving data between CPU and GPU is slow. Moving data between GPU global memory and shared memory, much faster. Operating on data already in registers or shared memory, that's lightning fast. The key insight is that computation is often no longer the bottleneck. Data movement is. This can completely invert traditional programming assumptions. Now let's get you set up so you can follow along with the puzzles. First, head to GitHub and clone the Mojo GPU Puzzles repository. Git clone the repo, then change directory into Mojo GPU Puzzles. Next, you install dependencies I highly recommend using Pixie as your package manager. It handles all the GPU dependencies beautifully and gives you access to Modular's Max and Mojo packages. You install it with this curl command. You can use UV if you prefer that. That works for most puzzles. 
Some advanced puzzles do require Pixie, so I'm just going to use it from the start. First, I need to verify that my GPU is detected. I'm going to run Pixie run GPU specs. This will show me what GPU hardware I have available. You can check the Mojo docs to ensure your GPU is compatible. Next, let's look at the project structure. The repository is organized into two main directories we're going to be visiting. The first is problems. This is where you work. Each puzzle has a template with sections marked for you to implement. Another relevant directory is solutions. This contains reference solutions for comparison and learning. Don't look at these until you've tried one yourself. It can be really valuable after you solve the puzzle to go compare your code to the solution code. To run a puzzle and verify the output, you simply use pixie run and then p and the number. So to run the first puzzle, pixie run p01. When you first run it, it will fail because you haven't implemented the solution yet, and that's expected. The error message will show you what output is expected once you've solved the puzzle correctly. If you check out the file pixie.toml, you'll see that pixie run p01 is a pixie task, an alias for another command. In this case, a mojo command to execute p01.mojo. If you're using UV as your package manager instead of Pixie, you'll need to run these Mojo commands directly instead. Here's something exciting. I'll be working through these puzzles on Apple M4 chip. This really demonstrates one of Mojo's strengths, cross hardware portability. You don't need expensive data center GPUs to learn GPU programming. The M4's unified memory architecture actually makes it perfect for learning and development. While some advanced puzzles like debugging tools and tensor cores are NVIDIA specific, the core concepts and fundamental puzzles will all work beautifully on Apple Silicon. Currently, puzzles 1 through 8 and 11 through 15 work on Mac OS. That's all the fundamentals and core algorithms. And all these skills we're building and the code we're writing will transfer across any GPU hardware. As I said, in this video tutorial series, what I'll be covering are the fundamentals, puzzles 1 through 8, but it can be helpful to understand the overall arc of what problems these puzzles solve. In the early puzzles, we'll start simple, mapping individual threads to data elements, understanding thread indices, and working with GPU memory. You'll write kernels that do basic operations like adding arrays element by element. Then we level up to multi-dimensional data and learn how to organize threads into blocks for better memory access patterns. The mid-level problems cover a lot of core algorithms, especially for large language models, parallel reduction, convolution, matrix multiplication, and then the advanced topics get into things like warp level operations. Some of these are NVIDIA specific. These advanced topics are out of scope of the tutorial series, but it can be helpful to know what's next after completing the fundamentals. As you're running puzzles, it's valuable to get feedback on your solution as you work. Every puzzle comes with a built-in testing framework that validates your solution. When you run a puzzle with pixie run p and the number, it will execute your kernel code, compare your output against expected results, and show you exactly what's different if your solution isn't correct yet. You'll see output like this, out and expected. This immediate feedback is really helpful for learning. When something doesn't work, and it often won't at first, that's part of the learning process, you can also check the hints provided for each puzzle. Once you've attempted a puzzle, you can also view the solution. This shows the completed code and an in-depth explanation for what that code does. Don't be afraid to experiment, try different grid and block dimensions, see what happens, GPU programming is learned by doing. Let's recap what we now understand. First, GPU programming is all about massive parallelism, mapping thousands of threads onto your data rather than looping sequentially. Second, CPU GPU model involves explicit memory management. You allocate on device, transfer data, execute kernels, and copy results back. Third, your primary concern for conformance is often data movement, not computation. Understanding the memory hierarchy is critical to this. Fourth, Mojo makes GPU programming accessible with Python-like syntax while delivering systems-level performance. You can run it on Apple Silicon, NVIDIA, or AMD hardware. Finally, learning through puzzles. Immediate hands-on experience with real running code is going to be the fastest path to mastery. This is just the beginning. In subsequent videos, we'll work through specific puzzles together. I'll show you my thought process, we'll debug, and you'll see real solutions running on my Apple M4. If you're excited about learning GPU programming with Mojo, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any puzzles in the series. If you have deeper technical questions, the GPU puzzles community is incredibly helpful. There are links to the Discord and forum in the description below. And remember, all this code is open source on GitHub. You can clone it, experiment with it, and most importantly, have fun with it. I can't wait to get started on this journey with you. 
GPU programming might seem intimidating at first, but together we'll break it down puzzle by puzzle until it all clicks. Let's go learn some GPU programming with Mojo. See you in the next video.